Dylan Mulvaney is a 26-year-old professional actress and comedian who grew up as a theater kid in San Diego, California. She also just happened to be born a boy. Dylan is known for about as long as she can remember that she identifies as female and as difficult as that made her childhood, it became an even bigger obstacle once she entered the theater industry and realized how gendered everything was. Simply put, producers were only willing to cast Dylan in male-oriented roles, which gave her very little wiggle room to expand into feminine characters. Mulvaney's 2020 tour with the Broadway musical The Book of Mormon was where everything in her life began to change. When that production was halted thanks to the onset of the pandemic, Dylan was finally able to turn her gaze inward and discover what it is she wanted out of life. While living back in her parents' house without a job, Dylan finally began to ask herself questions about gender that she had suppressed for so long. She explained to Girl Boss, I had never asked myself those dark questions because when I was four, I tried coming out to my mom as a girl, but it just wasn't a thing then. Being trans was very taboo. Then during the pandemic, I was back at home living with my family and asking myself, Dylan, do you feel like a boy? Realizing that the answer to that question was a resounding no, Dylan turned to TikTok and started producing comedy style videos that included throwing a gender reveal party for herself. After getting her feet wet by creating a ton more content on the popular social media platform, a little over a year later, Dylan would inform her audience that she was officially a trans woman. Following that initial announcement in March of 2022, Dylan began documenting her transition the very next day. Over the course of 2022, Dylan Mulvaney created created a series on TikTok she called Days of Girlhood, in which she openly addressed topics like why she decided against changing her name, while also documenting her experience with hormone replacement therapy and so much more. Initially, a lot of questions were raised over her decision to title the series Days of Girlhood rather than Days of Womanhood. So she broke down her reasoning in the following way. I didn't get to have girlhood growing up on time as everyone else and I'm now learning all the little things that little girls got to learn so long ago. I am going through many of the experiences of a child or a young adult and that's why I don't feel really guilty about calling it that. For the most part, Dylan focused on sharing the highs of her transitioning experience, although she has also occasionally let us in on some of her lows as well, such as that time an Uber driver made her feel wildly uncomfortable. But more often than not, her daily clips are chock full of optimism as well as humor from buying her first set of boobs to discovering how to use female sanitary products. Dylan never fails to share the good, the bad, and the ugly of her journey. By day 73, Dylan had come so far and made such inroads that even her own father was finally referring to her as his daughter for the first time. Then in December of 2022, Dylan took things to the next level. That was the day that she announced she was getting dropped off at the hospital to undergo facial feminization surgery. Now, for those of you who don't know, FFS encompasses a broad range of procedures that change the shape of the face to make it look more feminine. Examples include having the hairline move to create a smaller forehead, having lips and cheekbones augmented, or having the jaw and chin reshaped and resized. In late December 2022, Dylan began posting selfies from her hospital bed, letting us know that the process was over and that the time for healing had begun. She also wrote a personal note to her old face saying, for now, you are still a friend. Thank you for listening to my needs and taking one for the team. Please don't feel like you failed. I can assure it's me, it's not you. Since then, fans have continued to keep themselves updated on her recovery, like this clip from early January 2023, where Dylan reveals that she is literally the happiest she's ever been in her life. Later that month came the big moment, the face reveal. On January 27th, Dylan posted an epic two minute clip to TikTok. The features her channeling Audrey Hepburn in Breakfast at Tiffany's and dancing to Swan Lake. 
since then, Dylan has continued to see her popularity soar on social media, but that isn't to say that everything about her transition has gone smoothly. Today, Dylan Mulvaney has more than 10 million followers on TikTok, which is just an incredible number. Not only that, she walked her first red carpet at the Grammys earlier this year as well. But there are still a few things she hasn't been able to experience as a woman, like being kissed for the first time. During a conversation with People Magazine, the star opened up about her dating experiences since her transition, telling them, I'm getting a little impatient because especially when you're feeling yourself and even looking at the Grammys picture, I'm like, that's somebody who should not be single. But then you're like, wait, why is no one in the DMs? Well, now that Dylan identifies as queer, she believes her transition journey has given her a new opportunity to approach dating very differently than she has before. And this time, she wants to get things right. She continued to people, I can't wait for the day that I get to show people that a trans person can be in a healthy, happy relationship. According to her, what Dylan is looking for in a partner is someone who can make her laugh and help her take her mind off of all the important business decisions that she's making these days on a regular basis. Simply put, she can't wait to find someone she can just relax around and cuddle up next to on the couch. The only problem is that with how public Dylan is about her private life, it seems like most people she's talking to on dating apps aren't willing to put themselves out there as much as she is. Then again, with all the bank Dylan's been pulling in from advertising deals with companies like Mac, Neutrogena, Kate Spade, Nike, Bud Light, and so many more, I'm sure that she has enough on her plate to keep herself occupied until her ideal partner finally comes around. How long might it take Dylan to not only complete her transition but find the love of her life? We'll just have to wait and see. For now, this has been Before and After. Thanks so much for watching today's video. And before you head out, consider answering the following question. What's the most personal revelation you've ever shared with others on social media? Let me know if there's something that you'd be willing to be so candid about like Dylan is in the comments down below. I know it can be scary. Just check out my personal channel and you'll see what I'm talking about. But otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. My name is Kara. If you enjoyed this look into Dylan Mulvaney's transition, then why not stick around? Because next, we'll look at the inspirational story of Kim Petras. I'll see you all next time. Bye. Before becoming the first transgender woman to ever win a Grammy, Kim Petras was born in Cologne, Germany in 1992. At that time, her birth name was Tim, but by the time she was only two years old and being raised in the nearby town of Hanef, Kim was already coming to terms with her identity. As a small child, Kim was desperate for her parents to buy her the then popular toy known as Bratz dolls. But because these unusual pint-sized creations dressed kinda provocatively, her parents refused to give in to their child's demands. They believed that those dolls were too slutty. To this day, it's something that Kim still remembers and she recalled why it was so important to her to own these dolls by telling Paper Magazine, I wanted the brats so effing bad because honestly, that was so me and what I wanted to be. Around the age of five, Kim began hating her body. Having always felt like a girl, she simply couldn't identify with the male gender and didn't want to associate herself with it. Sometimes she'd even take to running around her bedroom with a pair of scissors, wanting to cut that physical attribute that labeled her a boy clean off. No, this always made me feel really bad because I always wished to be like a normal girl. Um, but I, I really had luck that my parents accepted me as a girl. Simply put, Kim suffered from being stuck in the wrong body. Luckily, while her parents might not have been down with buying her Bratz dolls, they were at least understanding enough to know that their child needed help. Of course, others around her showed far less understanding. For instance, her classmates at school would often bully her as soon as she stepped foot onto the playground. The difficulty she faced in these early years led her to consulting psychologists by the age of 10. Two years later, she legally changed her name to Kim and began occasionally wearing latex clothes to school. It might seem like a small thing, but it was Kim's way of taking control back over her own life. She joked with a German media outlet saying, at least I wanted to be well-dressed if someone threw their school lunch at me. After the experts that Kim's parent brought her to confirmed what their daughter was saying, that she was a girl trapped in a body of a boy, they began to understand where her level of desperation was coming from as puberty approached. 
In particular, the fears of her voice deepening and growing facial hair. So that's when her family decided to act. Shortly after changing her name, Kim became well known in Germany and all around Europe for becoming the youngest individual to ever transition from male to female. She started with hormone replacement therapy at the age of 12 and the following year, she was appearing on the German news program known as Stern TV to discuss the process in 2006. A year later, she'd gain even more attention when she appeared on further European news series while seeking the permission to undergo the necessary confirmation surgery. She had to do this because German law states that a person must be 18 years old before being allowed to undergo such a process. While some of the doctors that she approached told her that she was crazy, Kim was eventually able to touch base with Dr. Bernd Meyenberg. He, at the time, headed the psychiatric special outpatient clinic for children and adolescents with identity disorders at the University of Frankfurt Hospital. While he himself was also usually against such operations being performed on children Kim's age, after seeing how the process had helped some of his other patients become much more well adjusted, he realized in some cases it was the right decision to make. And as far as he was concerned, Kim was one such case. According to German law too, independent psychiatrists must confirm the necessity for surgery and approve the process so the family found one more doctor who agreed with Meinberg's findings, confirming once again that what Kim was suffering from was not in any way mental illness. An endocrinologist, which is a doctor who specializes in treating health conditions relating to the body's hormones, explained to the Daily Mail, there's a general lack of empathy with cases like Kim's, mostly because people know little about the condition. Imagine a man that suddenly starts growing breasts or a woman that starts growing a beard against their will. This is how Kim and people like her experience puberty. They are simply trapped in their wrong bodies. That is why it is best to help them as early as possible and reduce the trauma for them. Upon completing her transition at the age of 16, Kim immediately felt like she had a new lease on life and she couldn't wait to explore her new self. But the one holds up that she was already worried about is that others would only come to recognize her as the world's youngest trans woman. What Kim really wanted out of her life was to be known for creating music and she was already working on accomplishing just that. Not only had she published some of her early work to YouTube with songs like Last Forever, but she had also released a commercially available single in the German market titled Fade Away. In other words, as important as Kim's transition was, she refused to let it define her. After becoming the woman we know her as today, Kim Petras moved from Germany to Los Angeles at the age of just 19 and proceeded to grind out a career for herself with the support of a few friends. She described what this period of her life was like, saying, I flew to LA where I knew one or maybe two people from the internet. I slept on couches in studios, had little money, and just a few contacts. Over time, she steadily built up a solid CV for herself and began writing for artists like Fergie and well as Rihanna, while earning comparisons to others like Lady Gaga. And then in 2017, she landed a viral hit with I Don't Want It At All, featuring a special appearance from Paris Hilton in the music video. Despite that success, Kim remained independent largely because whenever she would approach labels, they only wanted to talk about her gender. Many of these higher ups told Kim to either hide her gender or use it, but she didn't want to do either of those things. So she simply continued to make her dream a reality on her own. Or as she put it to interview magazine, I wasn't discovered, I discovered myself. Since then, Kim has dropped two albums while collaborating with artists like Charlie XCX, Megan Trainer, and of course, Sam Smith. When she first teamed up with the English singer on Unholy, a song about male infidelity and the betrayal of an ideal marriage, she probably didn't expect to make history. But this song would reshape both of their lives and lead to tremendous success. In fact, in October of 2022, the duo became the first publicly transgender and non-binary solo artists to reach the top of the Billboard Hot 100 chart. And then came something even better, when the duo won a Grammy for Best Pop Duo Group Performance, making Kim the first transgender woman to ever take home this prestigious honor. During her acceptance speech, Kim made sure to shout out the transgender legends that have come before her and kick down the doors so that she could accomplish what she has. 
She also made sure to thank Madonna for constantly upholding the rights of the LGBTQ community. Lastly, she expressed gratitude for her mother, who has believed in her daughter from the very start. In the grand scheme of things, Kim Petra's past isn't something she can simply run away from. But at the very least, she's now firmly in control of writing her own narrative, having officially become the woman and artist she always dreamt of embodying. All right, everyone, that'll bring this latest before and after to an end. Thanks so much for watching. And before you head out, consider answering the following question. If you ever became the first person to accomplish something special, what would you want it to be? It doesn't necessarily have to be something as monumental as Kim just pulled off, but I'm interested to find out what some of you hope to accomplish. Once you've done that, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to always find out when we drop a new video. Thanks for watching. My name is Kara, and I'll see you all another time. Bye.